So look who is outside my living room window today. This beautiful, beautiful hawk. I swear this couldn't be more picturesque if it tried. It's just this beautiful, beautiful blue sky day. The fresh green leaves of spring are growing up this tree. This is a wonderful tree that I have enjoyed living next to so much because so many of the large birds, especially the birds of prey that live in the area, really like to perch there and keep an eye on all of the things that are going around down the, the trees and down on the ground nearby. And this is just so beautiful. You can see the big, the big branches up to the top there are usually where they hang out. But this guy today, has decided, look at that head, oh my gosh, you are so beautiful, has decided that he wants to hang out in the tree right there and keep watch over everything that's below him. And again, this is another great example, you guys, of just slowing down and looking around and looking up. Oh, he's stretching his talon. Did you see him stretch his leg? That was so cool. This is another example of just looking up and trying to see what's around you, you guys, because I've been watching people, and to be fair, I don't think anybody who's down there, you can see the park path, well, kind of, is right down there, and there's a busy road right there, and if you just look up, there's this beautiful hawk, this beautiful, beautiful hawk just sitting in a tree, and he's absolutely glorious. I don't know what type he is. I've seen a couple crows fly by and kind of eye him up, but they haven't tried to chase him away like they normally do just yet. So I'm not sure if he's either too tough for him, like it's too tough for the crow gang that lives in the area to chase away, or if they're just not competing for the same resources. But he's big and beautiful. I wish he was a little closer so that I could get a better glance at him. But he's just so beautiful, you guys. I'll try to look at him through the binoculars and see if I can ID him for you guys before he flies off. Oh, wow. All right, so what we have here is a red shoulder hawk. I am 90% sure. I looked through the binoculars to get a closer glimpse and there is indeed a little red patch of feathers right on the shoulders of this beautiful bird. And these red shoulder hawks we've actually seen quite often uh, in the area. They do pretty well in suburban populations where there's like, I mean, there's a road. Oh, are you making, oh, look at him go. Beautiful. And he's off the hunt. But yeah. Oh, I can hear him calling. Yeah, you guys, that was a red shoulder hawk. They do really well um, in suburban areas. They actually perch next to sources of water and hold still and keep an eye out until they are able to find prey. And apparently they mostly eat small mammals, but they'll also eat reptiles and crayfish and they'll eat birds occasionally, sometimes even preying on them from a bird feeder. So not good for the birds that come to my bird feeder, but that was absolutely beautiful. And yes, from what I was reading, the crows will sometimes lock talons with the hawks and they will fight and chase each other away from territory, especially if there's food that either the crow or the hawk happens to already have in their hands hands, or I should say their claws, and so they'll fight for the food, but they'll apparently join forces if a great horned owl moves into the forest, and they will chase the great horned owl out of the area together, which I thought was pretty amazing. Red shoulder hawks are normally found in thicker forest areas. Oh, and there's a little butterfly. Oh, we missed him. But yeah, they're normally found in thicker forest areas, but uh, they adjust pretty well to living in parks from what I was just glancing on really quickly. Allaboutbirds.com is an amazing resource. And yeah, I'll have to see if that guy comes back again because that was, that was really awesome.